Hi Dreamers, Timothy Rowland. Um, today I'm going to be doing a review of the new, well, it's new to me. This is the uh, video editing software that I use now. Uh, I actually got this one after uh, Filmora 9 went to crap and I had to go looking for another one. Now, I will say, uh, just, you know, as, as a point of reference, I do have an older, a little bit older version of the software, but this is PowerDirector 16. I know that there's a PowerDirector 17 now, and there's also a PowerDirector uh, 365. Um, I'm not real sure, like, how much better any of them are, but anyway, I have 16, and I have to say that I love it. Now, all of this that you see here, when you first open the software, this automatically loads. Uh, it's just kind of examples, basically. They're stock photos. I mean, obviously, you could use them if you want. But I will say this. Um, you can do even 365, uh, you know, which is the you know 365-degree three, videos. You can do those. You can edit those here even in uh, number 16 this example up here that's highlighted that one and this one you see the 360 in the corner uh so yeah i mean it even comes with examples like example videos like and all you do is you just drag it down here and there's that and then it actually recognizes it says you've added a 360 video to the timeline you know you can make the 360 project or you could actually turn the 360 degree video file into just a 2D, you know, like a regular style. And it will convert it for you. But we're not going to do that. So, anyway, like, you know, most of you looking at this are probably looking for, you know, a way to edit maybe YouTube or Instagram or, you know, that like social media style things. So, what I always do is I just highlight and delete them because you know obviously I don't need them for my projects but I will say that up here you can set the uh, the aspect ratio mine's always 16 by 9 I have to say just because it's like you know it's the widescreen video there's the 360 um, obviously if you're doing it for like on an Instagram or something like that you want to change uh, the, the size of the video so yeah there's that uh, like, I mean, most of the stuff is pretty standard. You know, this is, you know, you import, and let's do two, uh, because I'm going to show you something in a minute. So let's say, let's do that one, and that one. These are royalty-free videos, by the way, in case you're wondering. And as you can see, it imports pretty quick. And then, again, like I said, you just drag it down here. This is the timeline. The top one, you have the video file. Bottom one, you have the audio file. You can actually right click and then detach the audio from the video if you want, uh, which could come in handy, especially if you record your audio separately. The next line is for your like special effects, and then you have text and voiceovers and you know another music file. And I mean, it's just all kinds of stuff. This is the effect. Here you have different panels, and obviously you can go through these, see them all. Uh, trying to make this a pretty quick review for you, but yeah, I mean there's tons and tons and tons and tons of effects that are all separated by category. If you want, these are your video overlays, which again, you know, there's tons and tons of these too. Most of them obviously are animated. And some of them are pretty cool. And, of course, most of these uh, effects, well, maybe not the effects so much, but definitely the overlays, a lot of them are exclusive, you know, to PowerDirector. It's exclusive to the company that makes PowerDirector. So, yeah, there's that. Then you have what's called the particle panel, which is, you know, just other stuff that you can add to your videos. I mean, it's just really cool stuff. And, again... You know, this is all exclusive to the company, so it comes with this particular software. There's a nice little aquarium. And then, of course, you have text, which is a vast improvement. Text is one of the reasons why I left my old software, because I screwed that up, too. 
Um, so it's basically the old one you could only do titles, and that was it. Uh, this one's called a title room, but you know you have like different text that you can use. Okay, that's cool. Then you have all your transitions. Uh, I like that these things are all separated and they're all lined up on the left. Again, uh, separated by category, but yeah, these are all the transitions. And if you wanted to add it, all you do is just you know drag and drop it into the timeline. Here's the audio. This is the audio panel. And one reason why I like this is because you have, you know, obviously you could adjust the volume levels, but to fade in, all it is is wherever your timeline is, you click it, and like, uh, you'll notice it on a lot of my videos, if they have music, the end of it is a fade out, because I don't like the music to just, you know, abruptly stop. So you just drag it here, and wherever you want the fade out to start, there's that, and then just click the button, and it fades it on out. That's a voiceover, which I'm already doing, so... <laughs> It's going, you're already there. I don't know what you're talking about. This is if you want to separate it into chapters, which for YouTube, you're probably not going to worry about too much. And then you have your subtitle room. If you want to actually create, uh, you know, what is basically, if you want to close caption your videos right into the video, then this is where you would do that. You know, you just mark the time to start and then you just type them and yeah it creates the uh, the actual subtitle or closed captioning files that you need and now going back to the media which is you know the main part wherever you imported your stuff one thing I wanted to show you is if you come up here where it says media content and you click it you have other choices you have color boards that you can use and I can tell you that this green one here and this green one up here at the top, these are good if you want to put them in the background and then put an image over it. And then you can actually use these colors in chroma key basically as a green screen so that you can make a transparent background. So that is very, very handy. Then you have an entire panel of backgrounds that you can use. That you can see the preview for over there at the right. You have, you know, lights and you have a loved one and you have paintings and all kinds of stuff. So those are cool. Then you have the My Projects and then Express Projects, which is the other, another cool feature. This Express Projects is literally where, like, if you don't have to really edit anything, you can just put a bunch of video clips, uh, tell it what music to use and like hit go and it'll automatically create your video for you so you don't even have to sit here and edit um, but you just have to make sure that you know all your clips you know, make sure that all of your clips are done you know that you don't need to cut anything out or anything like that so there's that we're actually going to remove this from down here because I want to show you this oh well before I show you that um, if you have a bunch of different files in this section, like you have a bunch of photos and you have a bunch of videos and you have a bunch of audio and all that, you can actually use these buttons up here. This shows just the videos. If you click this, it'll show just the images that you have in here. And this will show just the audio files that you have in here. And then, of course, you can always search the library if you got way too much in there. Now, what I wanted to show you, this is one of the functionalities that Femora actually lost which made me oh so angry. Um, but if you click this little puzzle piece up here, you have Multicam Designer. You can, I mean, there's a whole bunch of this. Yep. All right, this is a video collage designer. Um, I, I like this a lot. I wanted to, like, point it out specifically because this is one thing. If you watch the Filmora reviews, well review and rant basically then you'll know that I had to leave for more video editing software and partly because this is one thing that they got rid of I mean they just completely got rid of it um, is basically just you know to be able to split which you know they have you can see up here at the top 
you can see they have a whole bunch of you know different options of how you would want to split it so basically you just do this it's real easy you know put say that there and put this one here this is the reason why I went ahead and imported two videos so I could show it to you but yeah you do that like I mean obviously this would make a whole lot of sense but we're still gonna do it and then you can adjust the border and the frame animation and I'll show you what that is in a minute and then you can tell it out of all these you know do you want to match it to the longest clip or the shortest clip or actually do it you know specifically by number which clip you want and then you just hit OK and it puts it on the timeline for you and the reason that animation is you can see that it's supposed to be split right but right now it's only showing one of the videos but that's because if you hit play you can see what it does and that's actually the animation and you can make it not do that so that it just starts off looking this way you know so anyway again uh, hopefully somewhat quick review just kind of down and dirty um, like I said I mean there's way too much to really go into obviously it has all the standard stuff you know you can take a snapshot of the screen up here wherever you are on the timeline you can do 3d you can adjust the audio you can adjust pretty much anything uh, which you know all that's kind of hopefully standard if it doesn't have that you're definitely looking at the wrong software and then it has all the tools here like the blending effect uh, splitting and then you have uh, this actually like this this magic tools kind of thing which is just a wizard and like let's say I wanted to export this you simply go up to produce right which the op other options up here you have capture and create disk and those are those are pretty self-explanatory at least I would hope so after you click produce you get to see this screen which you know over here gives you a preview and then up here the different file formats that you can pick from um, I pretty much always upload to YouTube so I need mp4 because it's a streamable format and it's a higher quality streamable format so I have the ABC over here and then right here it actually gives you the profile name and quality which is just a drop down menu um, I like to do mine at 1920 by 1080 and 120 so that's that uh, if you come down here I, you can see I have this checked all this does is it means if I hit start then it won't give me a preview in this window here while it exports and it just makes it export faster which I have to say it's pretty fast and I like this uh, bottom section down here that actually gives you you know free space use space the remaining and produced and time available and then it gives you all that you click these three little dots and then you can tell it where to put the file and also give it the name if you come up to the tabs up here which you know I always do standard 2d because like I said I do YouTube but you have other tabs like 3d uh, online which you know you can do device if you click on device then you can literally just pick uh, basically what device it's for you hit online the click the online tab and you know you can uh, upload directly to wherever you're uploading give it the title and the description give it your tags the categories all that kind of stuff so yep and obviously you know YouTube daily motion Vimeo whatever the hell this one is and Yuku whatever that is so yeah that's the quick fast down and dirty review for uh, power director 16 or at least power director I would recommend this if you're looking for a good video editing software. So, yeah, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye, dreamers.